and is another step forward in the in the fulfilling of the seven mountain mandate by taking her position as a supreme court justice and their attitude is yeah yeah we got another one in the office and and uh, they want to take over everything they want to infiltrate every layer of society with these with christian people and basically make make the world better and better and and truth is the bible says evil men and seducers are going to wax worse and worse yeah. so let's talk about the hot political issue other than those horrendous debates the other night, <laughs> we were, I, I thought we, <laughs> I thought I was watching a bunch of spider monkeys having a wrestling match in that thing. I, I oh, didn't know man. what to think with uh, Trump and Biden. I mean, it's like a bunch of angry old dudes yelling at each other. <laughs> right. You're dumb. No, you're dumb. No, you're <laughs> dumb. Shut up, stupid. <laughs> and I'm just like, wow. You know, the one thing that I took away from all of it was that. Joe Biden, the man who was the vice president for the worst president we've ever had in history, right. looked at Trump and said, "You are the worst president we have ever had." Right. And I was there thinking, "What? What dimension is he from?" You know, he's from 2020. I guess so. That, yeah, that is another dimension. So, uh, but what's happening right now is that they are uh, that they. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Ruth Bader Ginsburg, oh. uh, uh, you know, she uh, she crossed over to the other side. I won't say any more than just that about her. Uh, but uh, she she passed away, and now there's a vacant seat on the Supreme Court, and they're going to fill it with this woman, Amy Coney Barrett. And uh, the political left is going crazy because she is involved with some sort of Christian organization that believes that the husband should be head of the home. <laughs> And they think that is the patriarchy, and that is just so triggering these people and upsetting them that they just cannot stand that any woman would ever believe and subject herself to some man like that. That's that's really what a lot of these articles are saying. Uh, but uh, Amy Coney Barrett is actually a she is a Roman Catholic. She is a practicing Roman Catholic, and a lot of people are just you know oh great she's a Christian. This is amazing. We need more Christians in political power today, and uh, that's really not the whole story, ladies and gentlemen. Amy Coney Barrett is a new hybrid type of uh, of Catholic. She is a part of something called the Catholic Charismatic Movement. The Catholic <coughs> Charismatic Movement. This is a highly ecumenical movement. And basically, I want to say this, and from all the research that I've gotten and everything I can tell, Amy Coney Barrett is a part of the of these same type of churches that that cr have created what we now call the New Apostolic Reformation. Amy Coney Barrett is a part of this group, and uh, there is a there is a group of uh, it's like a Christian commune, really. It's it's kind of bizarre, but it's called the People of Praise, and it says that uh, we are a uh, People of Praise is a charismatic Christian community. We admire the first Christians who were led by the Holy Spirit to form a community, and so basically. These people are practicing the what's called communism in Acts chapter four. How they all the, all the believers were together and had all things common. Uh, this woman was a part of this charismatic Catholic community, and so there's uh, there's a lot going on here. But here's here's the three high points I want to bring out here to you on this website. This woman was a part of. They are charismatic. Uh, they are ecumenical, and you see that right there. And if you notice here in the back, there is some uh, there's some Romanism going on back there. If you guys haven't noticed. And then also they are in a covenant, meaning that they all basically, uh, they it, it says after a long period of prayer and participation in the community life, many members of the people of praise choose to make a lifelong commitment to the community, a covenant. Guys, I want to tell you that's not good. That is borderline Freemason stuff. That this is this is like a secret society. This is this is not the this is not the New Testament church. This is not what you see in the Book of Acts. You do not see people making what they call a lifelong, uh, <laughs> I mean, a lifelong commitment. I mean, that's like really that's that's swearing an oath. And guys, I don't know what's happening on that table with that girl writing on that piece of paper. Uh, but this is the type of stuff that um, I mean. I look at this, and I the first thing that comes out to my mind as I read this website is like David Koresh type stuff, the Branch Davidians. That that's it's almost the kind of vibe that this gives up. Uh, but Amy Coney Barrett is a part of this, and uh, I've got an article here. I want to just read a few highlights from you. Uh, from this this little article that I have, it says here, uh, President Donald Trump's nominee for the U.S. Supreme Court has close ties to a charismatic Christian religious group that holds 
Men are divinely ordained as the head of the family and faith. Former members of the group called People of Praise say it teaches that wives must submit to the will of the husbands. Uh, Barrett, 48, grew up in New Orleans in a family deeply connected to the organization. And as recently as 2017, she served as a trustee at the People of Praise affiliated Trinity Schools. So she was uh, she's been involved with this organization for a very long time. Um, I see, and she actually had written articles for a, like a <coughs> magazine that they put out. And uh, ever since her name's been in the main media, the website has deleted all those magazine articles. I mean, just, like all the all the magazines are off the website, and I understand why because the political left is relentless when they go after these Supreme Court justices, as we've seen uh, over the past little while. What was that one guy that uh, that they just put in there? That last Supreme Court justice they put in was that uh, and, uh, Kevin all. Uh, Kavanaugh, yeah, man, they were ruthless to that guy. They were horrible to that dude. And uh, and so I guess they're trying to protect her from that. But it says, People of Praise is international or in intentional religious community based on charismatic Catholicism. I want to pull this up on the on the website because I want I really want you guys to see this and really read what it says, okay? Um, People of Praise is an intentional religious community based on charismatic Catholicism, a movement that grew out of the influence of Pentecostalism. Guys, it, I mean, like, this is this article is Third Adam 1 and 2. This is what this is. It says that uh, they inf- emphasize a relationship with Jesus and that can include baptism in the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. The group organizes and meets outside the purview of a church and includes people from several Christian denominations, but its members are mostly Roman Catholic. And it says, uh, it says right here in the article, People of Praise was founded in South Bend, Indiana in 1971 as part of the Catholic Pentecostal movement, a devout reaction to the free love, secular permissiveness, and counterculture movement of the 1960s and 70s. Many of the group's early members were drawn from the campus of nearby Notre Dame, a Christian university. And so, guys, I mean, there's there's really is a lot going on here, but this is Roman Catholicism 101. Now, I've, I found an old video that I want to play for you and uh, just show you uh, some of the things that are going on here. But uh, you see that these um, the the ecumenicism years ago uh, that Billy Graham helped create is is become a monster in some denominations. I mean, these folks, uh, they they are Pentecostal whatevers, and they're, they're having all kinds of uh, shouting revivals and everything like that. But these people are Catholic. And a lot of people today don't realize that the average person who's speaking in tongues, uh, m- most of the people that are speaking in tongues, they are Catholics. tonight happen to be Baptists, Catholics, Episcopalians, Lutherans, Orthodox, Mennonites, Messianic believers, denominational Pentecostals, Presbyterians, United Methodists, non-denominational people, and many, many more. And you know, we don't exactly have a reputation over the generations for mutual love, unity, and brotherhood. 1967, Duquesne University. The spirit was outpoured. That's 50 years ago. It's Jubilee. Today, our Catholic brothers are with us. Tell us, Mateo, welcome. Give our shout of thanksgiving for our Catholic brothers. Go ahead. Thank you so much, Lou, for inviting us. Siamo una delegazione cattolica. Io vengo dall'Italia. We're a delegation, a Catholic delegation, and I come from e Italy. E vi porto il saluto da parte di 150 milioni di cattolici carismatici. And I bring you a salute from 150 million charismatic Catholics. And so you're seeing a crossover. The gifts that these Pentecostals claim that they have are now going into Roman Catholicism. And what you're going to see is a grand merger of all the denominations, not based on Bible doctrine, but based on spiritual experience. And this is a dangerous thing, and uh, that's really that, that. That's what this woman is a part of. Which brings me to my next point. Okay, <clears throat> um, this. And there's a lot of Christian people that are very excited about this, especially the Carrie Jobs and the uh, and uh, all the the big name charismatic people are very excited about this woman getting into office. Not really just because she's a conservative, 
but because they view that this is another step forward in the fulfillment of something called the Seven Mountain Mandate. The Seven Mountain Mandate. There is an article, and there's several people out there talking about this. This is um, this is what the Seven Mountain Mandate is. And they basically believe that Christians are going to infiltrate all levels of society and make the world a better place. And eventually the world's going to get better and better and better and better and better. And Jesus is going to step off into the world. And, and they, uses, they use phrases like ushering in the kingdom. We're ushering in the kingdom. And guys like Sean Foich that's doing those revivals out on the West Coast right now in the middle of Portland with all that, uh, all the uprisings going over there, he'll go right in the middle of that and just kind of do a, a Bethel singing and uh, charismatic worship out there and everybody's saying this guy's doing a great work for God. Well really he's a part of the new apostolic reformation and they practice and believe that the seven mountain mandate will come to pass before Jesus comes to to uh, comes to rule and reign on this earth. And so I want to give you just the seven areas that they believe and there's another graphic right there uh, showing what that is. But I want to just show you basically the seven mountains that they think that, the, that we're going to claim before Jesus comes back as Christians is going to be these seven areas of society business, government, family, religion, media, education, and entertainment. And so business, government, family, religion, media, education, and entertainment. They they believe that Amy Coney Barrett being placed into the Supreme Court is a fulfillment and is another step forward in the in the fulfilling of the Seven Mountain Mandate by taking her position as a Supreme Court justice. And their attitude is, yeah, yeah, we got another one in the office. And and uh, they want to take over everything. They want to infiltrate every layer of society with these with Christian people and basically make make the world better and better. And and truth is, the Bible says evil men and seducers are going to wax worse and worse. Now, the premillennial view, if I could just kind of draw a chart for you with my finger here, uh, the premillennial view says as time goes on that the world's going to get worse and worse and worse. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. They believe the opposite. They believe as time goes on, the world's going to get better and better and better. And that's why they, they practice things like Seven Mountain Mandate. They think we're going to basically take over the world. And what they do is they, they actually misinterpret a verse in, uh, in about the tribulation period. Now let me show you what this verse is. And there, there's a lot of old people that used to do this, and they would um, they they would misinterpret a uh, something about the the gospel being preached all four corners of the earth. Okay, um, look what it says. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to Matthew 24, and I want to show this to you. This is what this is where they get this. Matthew 24, verse 14, the Bible says, and it's talking about all the tribulation, all the things that are going on, false prophets shall arise, uh, iniquity bound, love many wax cold, they that endure to the end shall be saved. Okay, they, they get a work salvation out of that one right there. Uh, but it says, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So they believe that we're going to get the gospel everywhere, and then when we do that, we're going to try, Jesus is going to come back, and it's going to be amazing and so uh brother chris my camera's actually dying right there so let's okay. uh, let's try to get that uh, squared away while while i'm talking here and uh let's see here and then also it says um let's see here verse number uh let's see matthew chapter number or mark chapter 13 is talking about the same thing um it's talking about the tribulation it says and the gospel must first be published among all nations and so that that's really th th these are verses about the tribulation period that are being applied to now and this is the problem when you get into when you monkey with the bible and you fail to rightly divide the bible then you create a monster you create all kinds of crazy stuff like the seven mountain mandate uh, that these people are practicing and believing in right now and that's why they're so excited about this woman now guys i want to i want to reiterate to you and say this to you guys real fast and just just go around there but maybe the camera can help you out and get around there um, but uh, I want to reiterate to you guys that Romanism is not Bible Christianity. Romanism is not Bible Christianity. Just go ahead and just take it out and put it back in while I'm talking. That'd be fine. Um, Romanism is not Christianity. I got an angry email the other day uh, from a, a Catholic woman, and bless her heart. I want to try to read this to you guys while we're on here, and uh, that, that'll be fine. But uh, this woman sent me an email, and she says... Um, She's very upset that I would say something negative about Mother Mary, and that's what we did on our uh, 
on our YouTube channel here, we uh, we said we said a couple things about this woman being impl implemented into a place of power and what that means. And uh, let's see, what is that video right here? Uh, there it is, right there. Mother Mary prepares to take another seat in the. Uh, Supreme Court. So that's what I put there in the video, and she was very upset about that. And here's what this woman said to me in this article. Well, don't you love Brother Chris? He's doing such a great job of swapping batteries for us and all that good stuff. Uh, let me read to you this email this, this Catholic woman read to me and uh, wrote to me. She said, Catholics ask Mary to pray for them as you may have a friend pray for you. We worship the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this is what this Catholic woman said to me. She said, the Bible which you cherish and wave like a flag was given to us. She's talking about Catholics. Us, by God. And the New Testament was put together after the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus by the church fathers, a.k.a. the founders of the Catholic Church centuries before Martin Luther, who was also a Catholic. Can you believe that? I mean, look, look I want to, can I just, let me just clear the air on this issue real fast. The Roman Catholic Church did not give us the Bible. They did not give us the Bible. And the, the New Testament apostles, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, were not church Catholic fathers. These people had, the, the way they, they did things in the New Testament, the book of Acts, and the things that, that the apostle Paul taught and preached, had nothing, I mean, zero in common with Roman Catholicism. Matter of fact, if the apostles, the church fathers, you know the church fathers if those men were catholic then uh basically the first pope peter was married he had a mother-in-law so he's not doing a real good job he was he was a guy who uh, attempted murder in the garden of gethsemane they came to get jesus he swung a sword at the guy cut his tried to cut his head off but cut his ear off and then also he was a cussing fool he was a cussing guy when, when they said, you know, hey, we know you. You were the guy that spent all your time around that Jesus guy. I know who you are. And Peter swore and denied the Lord Jesus there. Uh, if anything, the, the apostle Peter was a Baptist preacher. <laughs> if anything, he was a Baptist preacher. Uh, but uh, she says this, we don't obey the Pope. Well, yes, you do. If you're in Romanism, you do obey the Pope. He's called the Vicar of Christ. And uh, she goes on and says all kinds of terrible things here. Let's see here. Um, she says, if you believe in Jesus, like I believe in Jesus, that he is the son in the Trinity, that he is God, if the Gospels are true, then Mary is the only woman in the history of our earth to carry in her womb and give birth to the living God we worship. That should merit respect at the very least not mockery now guys i don't sit here and mock mary i don't mock mary but I, what i do mock and what i do attack is the deification and the the exaltation of her above a human there is a doctrine that the catholic church holds to called the perpetual virginity of of, of mary they believe that she is was a perpetually a virgin and she she is the mother of god which that is as far removed from bible doctrine as you can get romanism is a form of paganism and it is brought out of mystery babylon where they worship the woman semiramis and all they do is Instead of, instead of calling her Semiramis, they just change the name here and there and call her Mary. And Third Adam chapter, uh, Third Adam two, we dealt with all that kind of stuff. And so th that's that's the problem. It's not that we're mocking Mary; we're mocking the the deification of Mary by Romanism. And it says, um, I mean, there's so many things here I could just try to break down for you guys. Um, but she says, get, get this, she says some very ugly things to me. She says, uh, you always say, what do I know? I'm just a guy with the Bible. So talk about what you understand in the Bible and don't open your mouth when your brain isn't in gear. Oh, that's, that's very hurtful, Brother Chris. That is a very hurtful thing to say. And then also she says, uh, actually, there's there's a there's a there's a paragraph here yeah. where where this this wonderful person and this person is so <laughs> filled with the love of Jesus in their heart, right? That they actually the final paragraph of this letter has a cuss word in it. Are you serious? Yeah, this 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 beautiful, sweet spirit spiritual Catholic woman sent me a letter with cuss words in it. She, oh, she needs to be writing Hallmark cards because she just, I just feel the love of Jesus coming off this right. letter, you know? And guys, that's, I mean, guys, I want to tell you, America was founded because people were fleeing an evil, 
evil religion called popery. Now I have in my hands a copy of a document called Of Plymouth Plantation by William Bradford. This was written a long time ago, 1600s is when this was written. This is actually the very first history document ever written in the United States of America. And the very first sentence of the very first history book ever written says this, written in America, mind you. It is well known unto the godly and judicious how ever since the first breaking out of the light of the gospel in our honorable nation of England, which was the first of nations whom the Lord ordained therewith with the gross darkness of popery which had covered and overspread the Christian world, what wars and oppositions ever since Satan hath raised, maintained, and continued against the saints. So, and by the way, in the, in the early years, they did a lot of run-on sentences and stuff. But the very first sentence of the very first history book written in the United States of America of Plymouth Plantation, William Bradford, the very first sentence condemns the false religion called popery. And that's why they came to America, to flee this blood thirsty, persecuting religion. And now, you see how times have changed. Now we're appointing these people to the Supreme Court. And uh, guys, I want to tell you right now, we're, we're, as a nation, we're in bad shape spiritually. And the problem and the, the message I have for people with when it comes to all of these issues and all these things that we're talking about here is I want you to know that, okay, they may be conservative, and, and the card that they like to play with us is the pro-life card. But these people are not your brothers at the end of the day. These people are not folks that you want to yoke up with. These people are not ones that you want to have something to do with. These people are, are all merging together. All the Pentecostals, the, the, uh, the, even the Reformed denominations, all, of the, all the Reformation people, the Methodists, the Anglicans, all of that stuff, they're all going to merge back from the source that they came from, which was Romanism in the Reformation eras in the late 1500s, early 1600s. And they're going to fulfill something called the Seven Mountain Mandate. They think they're going to do it. And all this Bethel and Hillsong crowd, all these guys are going to get together and they're going to have a, have a religion that is united not around Bible doctrine, but around spiritual experience. And this is why all this music is dangerous. This is why all of these Bethel Hillsong and Lauren Daigle and Carrie Job and Stephen Furtick, this is, this is the route that they are all going. They are all going to go and fulfill the will of the Pope and get yoked up with them somehow and it's probably going to happen through ecumenicism probably going to be done in the name of america and that is not a good thing and so we need to know that i want to remind everybody that this is not a good thing this is a dangerous thing politically yeah i think she may do a good job she may i mean she's a conservative and she she says a lot of things that i want to hear but guys at the end of the day we have to realize that these people that are into this charismatic catholicism these people are not your brothers these people are part of this end days false apostate denomination trying to fulfill something called the seven mountain mandate and that is a very dangerous thing and you need to be aware of that and so uh but guys we want to appreciate you i just want to say i appreciate you guys so much I had several people join our channel we're still going to do a drawing here at the end of the broadcast and uh everybody who makes a donation or joins our channel today will get uh, put in a drawing for a free mug or and a free mug and a book we're going to give away five of those at the end and that'll be really good so don't go away and so guys i've got a ton of papers right here you think i've you think i've said a lot of information so far i've got a stack a gigantic stack of papers right there and we're going to talk about communism and uh communism's everywhere can it's say, everywhere can you say that on youtube i don't know i just we'll did right. so it's over i think i said it in the intro video and yeah. they were okay with that so we're going to talk about that for just a bit and uh say you know just really just give some truth on that and really guys i'm telling you it is everywhere and the problem with with communism is that they don't call it that they call it something else i'm going to show you what that is as a matter of fact many many neo-evangelicals are swallowing communism and they don't even know it so we'll talk about that in just a minute, guys. Don't go away, and we will be right back. God bless you. 
Hey guys, your friend Spencer here. A couple years ago, the Lord laid on my heart to do some research into the contemporary Christian music world, and I was astounded at, at what I found. I just found so many unbelievably unbiblical things, even some demonic things that were happening. And the Lord led me to put all that into a book form, and this is the book we have written, Calling Evil Good, The Live Christian Rock and Roll. And as far as books that are dealing with the negative and the dangerous aspects of contemporary Christian music, this book right now is the number one seller as of the time of the recording of this video. And so uh, we want to put this out there and let you know about this book. Uh, this book will be shipped to your front door by Amazon. And we've had so many good reports from all over the world, really, of people saying that, man, this book really opened up my eyes to the truth of this entire industry. And we deal with people like Hulk Hogan, Britney Spears, Beyonce, uh, Amy Grant, Alice Cooper, Elvis Presley, Larry Norman, R. Kelly, Puff Daddy, and all the record companies really all together. We deal with the, the whole big spectrum. So get your copy today. There's a link in the description below, and I know this book will help you understand the issue better and understand why this is an issue. So God bless you, friend. Hope you enjoyed the book. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and look forward to many good updates with you in the future. God bless you. Hey guys, your friend Spencer here. I've got exciting news about our new book, From Football to Faith. It is now available on Amazon.com. All you have to do is click the link below. It'll take you to Amazon's website and you can get your own copy sent to your front door and uh, that will be a blessing. Uh, in this book, I gave my testimony of how I came to know Christ as my Savior and a lot of the character lessons that I learned playing football that are applicable to the Christian life. And you'll find many good stories in here that are funny, some that are sad, some that are uh, inspirational. But I'm sure this book will be a blessing to you. Christians young and old will enjoy this book, and I know that it'll be a blessing to you. So go ahead and get your copy today, and we appreciate you guys. And if you haven't done this already, go ahead and subscribe to our channel, and look forward to many more good videos together in the future. God bless you, friend. Have a good day.